Welcome back to the channel. I'll come out today with Peter. He's going to do a brew in a minute. We'll just come out and set the hammocks up. It's bit, this is a bit of a video response to Lee from Button Outdoors. He's got some new whippy slings and he said he's not getting on with them perfectly well. So I said I might do a video for him, showing him how to adjust them, how they work, what you shouldn't do with them, how to set your hammock up with them. How I do it, I'm not saying it's the way that everyone should do it, I'm just saying how I do it. You know, I'm not telling you what to do, so I don't think I am, and don't leave it in the comments. Right, I'm going to get a brew on. Peter, he's just collapsed into this hammock over there. I'm going to get a brew on, then I'm going to get on and show you. It's in a bit. Peter's got his bearded swinger out on because he's going to be swinging in a minute. Yeah. Right, Peter's going to try and get up now without kicking that all down. I'm not helping him because he shouldn't have done it. Uh, yeah, it's smug now, ain't you? Do you hear the woodpecker? Has it gone out? It's very shit. Why don't you um use meths like anyone else? So you're gonna use twelve of those, are you? You need to have a word with yourself. And buy some meths. There's a lot of water in here, Paul. He needs to have a word with himself. There's a lot of water in there. He might have to be demoted from Brewmaster if he can't control this stuff. We've been here about five hours. I'm parched. Yeah, he's got to relight it. So it went out, didn't it? Like that match has. It's burning inside, just stop trying to relight it. Right, let's do some of them. Um, I was going to have the brew before the whoopee sling review, but I'll have a battery. I've, it'd be dead. Memory card will be full. It'll be dark. Time Peter gets the brew going. So let's have a look at this. So we've both got different setups. We've got the same hammock and the same straps and the same whoopee slings. Apart from I've got a slightly different whoopee sling to him, I've got a ring on mine. They're exactly the same slings though. Peter likes a nice long wide gap on his hammock between trees for some reason. He just likes it. I prefer a shorter gap. In fact, I prefer a gap that my tarpa fit on. But I don't mind what gap I use because we're using the same setup. And the thing is, you can wrap these slings so it doesn't matter what you're doing. They can go around short as long, whatever. So we're using carabiners on both ends, obviously. I have a ring. Most people will go straight through this cord, the Dyneema. So, you have a tail end. Mine's quite long because this is quite short. If I pull it through, this would become short and that would become long, which I'm going to demonstrate. Right, so Peter's doing some filming. He's actually doing something other than boiling water today. I know, as I'm shocked as much as you are. So the ends, let's start with the tidiness. If anyone wraps up paracord, the way they wrap it is usually just coiled. That's how I do these, but loose at the moment. Adjustment, coming close to this. This is a big loop. And the reason it's a big loop, I need you writing on this. This one, it's been picked apart and this 
piece here will go inside it and it'll go down the middle of it and it'll come out let me get this out of the way and it'll come out to the hammock so this line here goes straight through the center of this line and out of here which is there and then this like this line like i said has got a hole in it where they've just threaded this through so when you put weight on it it stretches it and it stops it slipping it's like a i don't know what you'd call it sheaf yes it's, it's a sheaf but it, because it's it can move look as you watch i push that i can get it to get really really opened up so if you pull it it goes really tight again around so the way you adjust it if i want more hang so my hammock's lower i will get the piece that goes through the center that's the one i hold which is here and i will pull it by holding this with a pinch and i will pull that tail through as you can see it's just ramming straight through no problem easy then if I, if I feel that my hammock's too low, which it is now, I'll go to the other end, hold the outer sheath line, and pull the inner sheath line through. I was holding the outer sheath line. Right, and now when it's, that's quite an open coil around that inner, but if I, if I do this, it'll just tighten it. I don't even do it. Personally, when I adjust my hammock, I don't touch it. As soon as I get in it anyway, it'll pull tight. But they say you should stroke your stroke your bead to get it nice and um, taut again. So what you don't want to do is this. You don't want to keep on adjusting until you go up past this point here. Don't touch the camera lens, I guess. Then. If you go too far, this becomes a nightmare to pull back through. So I'm not going to put any weight on this because if I do, it will go tight. And I have a, a hell of a job to get this back out. So never go that far. Go to about here. That's about three inches. Because then it's so easy to come back to it and adjust. Don't go over three inches. Right, I'm going to get this back to where I want it. I'm going to show you where it should be. One end should be slightly higher for your feet, which is this end compared to that end. This is slightly higher. But now I'm going to show you how it is when you sit in you sit in your hammock, you really want it so you can tuck underneath your knees and you can sit down with your feet flat on the floor, hammock tucked under and you're in a chair basically. Now I'm sitting like I'm in a chair, proper angled. So if I want to lie down now, this is the higher end for my feet, I just have to swing around and go straight in. And that's how it should be. So if I want to get out of it, I do exactly the same when I'm in a sitting position. If you're in a sitting position, you're in a comfortable position. I've seen loads of people put hammocks up where they're really high and they can't sit in them. There's no point to the hammock if you're not going to use it properly. So to get up, just grab onto your hammock, pull yourself around, back in a sitting position. And if you're not happy with it, do a quick, this is how quick it is to adjust. Go back to your whoopee. I want it a bit lower. Hold the outer sleeve one and just pull, if you're not treading on it, and just pull the inner sleeve through two inches. That shows down a hole. That's two inches adjusted. And then when I come to sit back on it, it should be a little bit lower. Like that. So now I'm a little bit lower. Only a tiny bit, but that's how easy it is to adjust. The way it goes through your hammock is when you first get a whippy swing, it's going to come to you, with, it's going to look weird, you won't know what's going on. But this is a very small loop. A very small loop goes through there. I'll put a video up showing me threading this actual one in and it'll be at the end so you can go and have a look if you're not sure. There's a loop that goes around this whole cord, it goes through and just loops through itself. And then to tidy this up, it's no different to doing your um, cordage. Just call it up, wrap it. I always do this. I never leave it hanging around on the floor. You're going to trip on it, tread on it. It's going to get filthy. Then it can just hang there. Once you've got your setup correct, it'll just hang 
on both ends because that one's already doing it and then you're sorted it's a really simple way and if you know how to use whippy slings you'll never go back to a strap a strap is just difficult to when you go between trees that are different like mine and peter's he's on a massive spread i'm on a short spread we're on the same setup but as to the versatility you can just go and set up anywhere it's brilliant so I hope that helps with the whoopies. I'll, I'll run over it again if it's if you've seen enough. Don't worry. The outer cordage runs around the inner cordage. You just have to pinch on it. Always pinch the outer. Pinch it there. Pull it. You want to loosen it. Pinch the outer. Pull it. That's as simple as it is. Done. Whoopies are brilliant. I trust them. They oh, hold weight on the camera. So there's your whoopies. Absolutely fantastic. And before I go, I wanted to just show you something else. I, I'm not doing a review on it. I've got another torch. I've got a bike mount for this one because anyone that knows me, they know I cycle. So it looks like my original torch, but it's the Mark II. So what I'm going to do is show you just a short video of it on the bike because there's a bike mount that they sell separately. Right, so this is the mount mounted onto the bike with this little S1R baton 2 in it. The mount I hold other torches, I've got another torch in my pocket we'll shove in there. <clears throat> I'll tell you how the mount works. So you get this like a rubber tab you can pull. That'll release it, take your torch out. I'm holding camera by hand here so I'm doing quite well I think. And there's a <clears throat> S2R baton, which is a bigger baton. You look at big size to it, and that hold that no problem. Let me try and put that on with one hand. There we go. So it holds the torches. This will turn. This is the other rubber mount there, which will undo to take it off the handlebar. But there's a screw underneath. You can undo it to loosen it, which will let you turn the head. So it'll go in any, any um, orientation you want. So it doesn't have to be that way and that way. You can have them both the same way. So it could be your torch will fire one way or the other. So the great thing about that is if you're in a tent and you've got a tent pole or a trekking pole, the mount could go around the pole, torch could go on the mount, and then you've got yourself a, um, a torch in your tent, up or down, whatever you want it. Or you can have it orientated sideways, so it fires sideways. So you've got a light above you. And if you're in the woods, you can stick that mount on a branch. You know, I'm not saying it's just for a bike, basically, but it's a good mount. And there's a promotion on it. Oh, yeah, that's why I'm showing you it, because there's a promotion on it, so I let you know if you want a torch. Have a look on the net. There's a link in the below. And it will take you to their promotion for this torch. And there's another torch you can get as well. So that's on Friday. So it'll be on probably tomorrow as I'm putting this video up on Thursday. But I'm going to show you this on the mount. I'm not going to show you it working in that because it's the same as all the other low lights. You've seen those. So yeah, that's that. Peter's near red on the brew. So let's get settled back down for a brew because it'll be dark by the time he's finished. You've got your inner and your outer. Just know what each one does. So you always want to be pulling the inner through the outer. The outer is static, it doesn't move, it's static. It's the only thing that slips is the inner. You got the coffee? Oh, yeah, it's very hot. I can see that. It's ash in it as well, isn't it? Is it? Well, mine has. What are you going to do? Do you want to put yours down somewhere? Yeah. I'll have mine when it cools down a bit. Yeah, I'm going to put cold in mine. Cheers, everyone. I'm not going to drink it because it'll blow my face off. But cheers. <laughs>